Well, you know, nobody has done more for Christianity, nobody has done more for religion of all types than me. Those insane words are not mine. That is the latest burst of verbal dementia from Donald Trump in an interview today with the Christian Broadcasting Network. Now, I have known since my Catholic school days that that is blasphemy. And the six Catholics on the Supreme Court know that's blasphemy. Donald Trump thinks he has done more for Christianity than Jesus Christ. Donald Trump is uneducated in all things. And so he does not know who Christianity is named after. And so it is ironic to put it mildly that three of the Supreme Court justices appointed by the only blasphemous president in history are leaning heavily on their religion as they willfully, for the first time in American history, revoke a constitutional right. In the draft Supreme Court opinion that will live in infamy, Samuel Alito says on page one, the Constitution makes no mention of abortion. The Constitution also makes no mention of the right to travel. The government has never granted us the right to travel, yet we have always had it. Roe versus Wade linked the right to abortion services to the right to privacy, which we also always assumed that we have, but the Constitution doesn't mention a right to privacy. And Samuel Alito and a majority of the Supreme Court don't believe that you have a right to privacy, but they do believe that they have a right to privacy, which is why the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court for the first time in its history has ordered an investigation of the very worst thing that has ever happened to the Supreme Court. The court's privacy has been invaded. The Chief Justice calls the violation of the court's privacy a, quote, egregious breach of trust. And that's how the Supreme Court feels when they lose their privacy. It's egregious for them. But they don't care how you feel when they take your privacy away. The private deliberations of the Supreme Court have been invaded by the leak of the Alito first draft of the revocation of a constitutional right. Samuel Alito says that a right to abortion services is not, quote, deeply rooted in this nation's history. Women on the Supreme Court are not deeply rooted in this nation's history. Nowhere does the Constitution say that women can serve on the Supreme Court. Nowhere does the Constitution say that black people can serve on the Supreme Court. The founders thought only white men should ever serve on the Supreme Court. The founders were the original proponents of affirmative action exclusively for white men. The founders deeply and fervently believed in carrying out the mass murder of as many members of the native tribes of this continent and enslaving as many black people as was necessary for white men to reign supreme in this land. That is deeply rooted in this nation's history. If you are using deeply rooted in this nation's history as the basis for what you think is right and just, then you are lost. You are morally lost. Samuel Alito reaches back to legal writings in 17th century England to show that the right to abortion services is not deeply rooted in our history. He cites Sir Edward Cook writing in 1644, that abortion is a crime. In 1644 in England, they were still having witch trials ending in the execution of the convicted witches. And Sir Edward Cook helped English law define witches when he rewrote English law in 1604 to make it even more cruel in witchcraft trials. He wrote, a witch is a person who hath conference with the devil to consult with him or to do some act. So Samuel Alito is quoting approvingly the 1644 judgment on abortion of an English aristocrat who said a witch is a person who has conference with the devil. Samuel Alito is reaching back four centuries to use Sir Edward Cook 
as a moral authority on abortion, a man who believed in witches and believed they were working with the devil and believed that witches should be murdered by the state, and he helped make sure that they were murdered by the state in England. Samuel Alito needs to talk to the clerk working for him who found that reference to Sir Edward Cook and get that erased from his draft opinion. We were executing witches in this country as late as 1692. Men and women were given the death penalty in this country for being witches, mostly women, of course. Dorothy Good was four years old when she was accused of being a witch in Massachusetts. So when you're justifying outlawing abortion because people conducting witch trials also believed abortion should be against the law, you are morally lost. That is what the twisted reasoning of Samuel Alito has delivered to us in the first Supreme Court opinion in history, revoking a constitutional right. For most presidents, the only thing they get to do that outlasts their presidency is appoint Supreme Court justices. Clarence Thomas's service in the Supreme Court is the only enduring thing from the presidency of George H.W. Bush. A vote for George H.W. Bush for president in 1988 has turned out to be a vote to revoke a constitutional right. His son, George W. Bush, created the Department of Homeland Security, which endures, and began wars that he could not complete. But his most enduring legacy is now the delivery of Samuel Alito to the United States Supreme Court, the first Supreme Court justice to write an opinion revoking a constitutional right. Donald Trump did something that no one-term president has ever done before. He appointed three Supreme Court justices. The last president to appoint three Supreme Court justices was Ronald Reagan, and it took him eight years to do it. Donald Trump, the president least capable in our history of evaluating candidates for the United States Supreme Court got to appoint three of them, and all three of them are voting to revoke a constitutional right. Seventy percent of the country is opposed to what the Supreme Court is doing. In a democracy, this could never happen. But we do not live in a democracy because of the Electoral College and the United States Senate. The only way the Alito opinion can get a majority vote in the Supreme Court now is thanks to the Electoral College installing two Republican presidents who came in second with the voters. Al Gore got more votes than George W. Bush, but George W. Bush got the presidency thanks to the Electoral College. Donald Trump came in second with the voters by a wide margin, but was installed in the presidency by the Electoral College. Democrats in the United States Senate represent far more people than Republicans represent, but both parties have the same number of seats in the United States Senate because of the profoundly anti-democratic formula that each state gets two senators. The 44 million people of California get two senators, and the 1.6 million people of the Dakotas get four. That is not democracy. That can never be democracy. And so 70% of the country is living tonight under the anguish and the weight of minority rule. 70% of the country is losing a constitutional right against their will. 70% of the country has had that constitutional right for their entire lives. But for Samuel Alito, that is not deeply rooted in this nation's history. There is one president in our history who was impeached twice and never won a majority vote in a presidential election, and he got to a point the same number of justices as Ronald Reagan, who won 49 states in his re-election campaign. There is one president in our history who provoked serious public discussions of using the 25th Amendment to remove him from office, and he got to appoint three Supreme Court justices. The first public discussion of the 25th Amendment with Donald Trump that I'm aware of to remove him from office was on this program in the first month of the Trump presidency, and we now know that in the last month of the Trump presidency, in the last days of the Trump presidency, there were serious discussions about removing Donald Trump using the 25th Amendment, and those discussions were taking place among congressional leadership in both parties. 
Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the House Republicans, participated in discussions about removing Donald Trump using the 25th Amendment after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Today, the authors of the new book titled This Will Not Pass released audio tape of Kevin McCarthy in a meeting with House Republican leadership discussing the possible impeachment of Donald Trump and the possibility of removing him from office using the 25th Amendment. Yeah, look, what the president did is atrocious and totally wrong. Um, from the standpoint, you're 12 days away. I mean, the one point I'd make with Biden, if you have an impeachment and you're stuck sitting in the Senate and he needs cabinet members, he's got Secretary of Senate, he's got a lot of things that he's got to have moving. And if you think from a perspective, you put everything else away, this country is very, very divided. You know, I think the options that have been cited by the Democrats so far are the 25th Amendment, which um, is not exactly an elegant solution here. That takes too long, too. It could go back to the House, right? Yeah, and, and it, it, it's correct. If, if the president were to submit a letter overruling the cabinet and the vice president, a two-thirds vote in the House and Senate to overrule the president. So it, it's kind of an artful, uh, obviously, impeachment has been discussed. And then, I, I mean, I think they want him to resign, which... I don't see happening either. Um, but members are talking about it, and um, we'll keep you posted on what we're hearing. The president they are talking about got to appoint three Supreme Court justices after coming in second with the voters and after Mitch McConnell defied the Constitution and refused to bring President Obama's last Supreme Court nominee to a vote in the Senate so that Donald Trump could choose one of the names on Mitch McConnell's list to fill the seat on the Supreme Court that the Constitution said should have been filled by President Obama. Such is the constitutional treachery of Republican minority rule in the 21st century, which is well on its way to being deeply rooted in this country's history. 